Hey there, hope you're doing well, and I hope you're ready to learn about inverse functions. Uh, but before we get there, we gotta learn about one-to-one -one functions. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about what a one-to-one -one function is. I'll tell you what they do and why we need them. So what you should learn is that a one-to-one -one function is just one input giving you one unique output, and why we need them is so that inverses can happen. That's our next video. Why we need inverses is so that we can explore exponentials and logarithms. So we're gonna get right into it. It's gonna be pretty brief. There's not a whole lot here besides you just need to know what a one-to-one -one function is so that you can tell when a function is going to have an inverse and when it's not. So a function is a one-to-one -one function. Firstly, if, if it's a function, and secondly, if that function gives you one unique output for every one input. You see, if we just cover up this one word right there, that's what a function is. So a function is where one input gives you one output, but a one-to-one -one function says, okay, okay, it is a function for sure. So one input is giving you one output, but the output is unique. Unique means doesn't happen again. Like, like we're all unique. We don't have an exact replica of some, someone of ourselves floating around somewhere hopefully, um, but that's what a one-to-one -one function is. It's where one input gives you one unique output. It doesn't happen again. And so we're going to explore that a couple times to see what it looks like. The reason why we have to have one-to-one -one functions for inverses to work. Remember, this is not just a video about one-to-one -one functions. It's a video about one-to-one -one functions. It's supposed to teach you something else about inverses. So here's why you need it. In an inverse, what we're gonna find out is that we are going to switch the x value with the y value in general for every inverse that we, we deal with. So we need functions to be one-to-one -one in order that their inverses are also functions. We're gonna explore that when we get to inverses. For now, one-to-one -one function means one input, one unique output doesn't happen again. So we're gonna take a look at that. Let's imagine we get this, this scenario here. So we got some employees and they have an ID number. So there's Mark, Joe, Ty, Jane, and Mark has an ID number 325. And Joe has an ID of 184. Ty has this 007 and Jane has 291. So what are our inputs and what are our outputs? Our inputs are the names, Mark, Joe, Ty, and Jane. And their ID numbers are our outputs. 325, 184, 007, 291. One idea that I like to say that one-to-one uh, -one functions have to maintain is this idea of mapping forward and backward. So if I say a name goes to an ID number, the ID number has to be mapped backward to that same name. Well, that's the case here. If I say, Mark, you know the ID is 325. If I say ID of 184, you know I'm talking about Joe. If I say 007, you know that that's Ty. And if I say Jane, you know it's 291. They're mappable both ways. So inputs determine one output and outputs determine one input. You see, if we didn't have a one-to-one -one function, it'd be something like this. Now that wouldn't work too well if we were trying to assign ID numbers to employees, because if I was trying to punch in my code and I'd be like, all right, 325, I know that's Mark, 184, I know that's Joe, 007, well, here, if both Ty and Jane have 007, um, well, then they both they would both have an ID number. Notice, it would still be a function. Every input has one output, even Ty and Jane. They both do have an output. The problem comes in, if I'm trying to put in my 007, it doesn't know who to go to. It doesn't know from where it came. And so we'd be punching in 007 and then the computer or whatever, we get confused. Like, well, who is that? Is it Kai? Is it Jane? That doesn't make, that doesn't make any sense. This is a non-one-to-one -one function right now. So before we had a one-to-one -one function, this is not. This is not one-to-one -one because an input's given us a unique output, yes, and here, but not here. This input is not giving us a unique output. They'd be arguing, who's running 007? I don't know. Even if I do this, I said, well, that solves everything. Now, you, now you're, you both have 007. Well, well that's the same thing. Um, that's just listed the output twice, but they still have the same output. It's still not mappable backwards and forwards. In order to be a one-to-one -one function, every input has to have a unique output. It can't occur again. And again, the reason is, when we get to inverses, your outputs become your inputs. So if my outputs become my inputs, then 
one input is giving us one output, that's a function, but the reverse would not be true. If these were inputs, it would not be a function. I'd have the same input giving me two different outputs, and we know that's not possible for functions. That's why we need one-to-one -one functions to exist, so that our inverses actually make sense. So let's explore this. Now that we have just kind of an idea down on what one-to-one -one means, this is not one-to-one. -one. The previous example was. Let's look at now some relationships and then some graphs, and then we'll start talking about um, some functions in the next video. So let's take a look at f and g. These are just relationships that have four points and five points respectively. And if we know anything about points, we know that our inputs are x values, so 1, 3, negative 7, and 18, and our outputs are negative 2, 4, 1, and 12. All we have to check to see whether this is a one-to-one -one function is this. Are your outputs repeated? If they are, you do not have a one-to-one -one function. If your inputs are repeated, you don't even have a function at all. So, and we, we saw that on what was called the vertical line test. Well, now we're not really looking this way, we're kind of looking this way. It's gonna lead us to something called the horizontal line test in just a moment. So what we look for is, hey, one, three, negative seven, 18, none of those are repeated. None of our inputs are repeated. That means this represents a function. Then we look at our outputs, negative 2, 4, 1, 12. Oh, none of our outputs are repeated. That means we had a function, now this is a 1 to 1 function. Every input is giving us a unique output, negative 2, 4, 1, and 12. Those do not occur again, this is 1 to 1. Now let's look at G. If we had to read through our inputs, and it's pretty easy to identify, which is why this is such a quick video, our inputs are 2, 11, negative 5, 6, and negative 1. We can tell right there none of our inputs are repeated. What that means is that G does represent a function. We just need to classify it and say, is it a one-to-one -one function? Why? Well, because with one-to-one -one functions, I can find an inverse. Why do I need an inverse? Inverses are the only way mathematically that we have to undo a lot of the things that we have, such as we need subtraction. Why? So because it undoes addition. Uh, we need division. Why? Because it undoes multiplication. We need a square root. Why? Because it undoes a power 2. We need logarithms. Why? Because they undo exponentials. Exponentials we're going to find out are a one-to-one -one function and therefore have to have an inverse, and we're, we're getting there. So is f going to have an inverse? Yes, because it's one-to-one. -one. Is g going to have an inverse? We're about to find that out. We know it's a function for sure because our inputs are not repeated, and now we check our outputs. 6, 9, negative 2, negative 3, and 6. Oh, that's a problem. If our outputs are repeated, well, then what that means is that <clears throat> we do not have one input giving us a unique output. And when I get to inverses and switch them around, my outputs become inputs. I don't even have a function anymore. So while g is a function, it's not a 1 to 1 function. 2 gives you 6, and negative 1 gives you 6. Every input is not giving you a unique output. This is not 1 to 1. All right, in the next video, we're gonna find out that this would cause you to be able to find inverse. This one wouldn't for some of the reasons that I mentioned, and we will explore a lot more in the next video. Now we can finally look at this graphically, just to understand that if our x-axis is our input axis and our y-axis is our output axis, here's what we're looking at. Firstly, we want to determine whether these are all actually functions. So we're gonna use what's called the vertical line test. Vertical line test says your outputs look this way. So for every input, if you wanted to find the output, you would look vertically. And so <clears throat> we imagine a whole lot of vertical lines and we say, all right, if a vertical line were to intersect our graphs at more than one point, then what that would signify is that at that input, we're, we have two different outputs and functions do not allow for that. So vertical line test says these are all functions. They're all functions. They all pass the vertical line test. Every one of our inputs on all of these graphs is giving us one output. Now we check whether it's a one-to-one -one function. But wait, one-to-one -one functions say, are your outputs repeated? Because outputs are along your y-axis, we'd say, okay, it's, it's like this. Does this graph have an output of, let's imagine, three? Does this graph have an output of three? I would be looking, not vertically, I'd be looking horizontally because that is the level at which that would have that particular output. So if I'm looking for more than one output to occur graphically, I'm actually looking horizontally. I'm saying, okay, these are my output levels, kind of like a ladder, 
go up and down and just check to make sure at that level you only have one output. So this, if I imagine all these horizontal outputs, all these horizontal levels, it's only going to be hitting my graph at one time. That means that all of our outputs are unique. They don't happen here and then happen again later. They're only happening once. Every input is giving us one output. Yes, that was, that was a vertical line test. One unique output, that's the horizontal line test. And that's why you need both of them. Vertical says function. Horizontal says, okay, now that you've determined the function, now that you have a one-to-one a, um, a -one function. This, because every level is giving us, every uh, output is giving us exactly one intersection with our graph that says that we have only one output at each of those, uh, of those y values, each of those levels, if you will. This is one-to-one. -one. So is the next graph. So if I imagine all of these values along the y-axis, every possible output we could have, and I imagine some horizontal lines, because that's the level at which our outputs would be, well, at those horizontal lines, I'm only intersecting our graph one time. That means there's only one output for each of the, or one point that represents those outputs at each of those values. So this is a one-to-one -one function as well. Now the next graph, a parabola, and in general, every parabola, unless we start restricting the domain. And we'll see that in our, our inverse functions, that we can do that sometimes. But if I take a look at this and say, well, okay, let's imagine. Let's imagine all these y values, all these output values. And I'm going to think output values are, are horiz a horizontal thought. It's this, this level. So if I'm looking at, at this level of an output, am I touching my graph twice? If I am, then there are two inputs, which give us the same output. And that's not allowed. We have to have unique outputs. So here's our, and there's, there's lots of them, but there's, there's two outputs here that are the same. That means that there's two different inputs that are giving us the same output. Well, that's not unique. What would happen is that when I try to find inverse, my outputs become my inputs. And then I would have um, the same input Remember, that's the same height, right? The same value. That one output value becomes my input value. I'd have the same input giving me two different outputs. Well, we would see that. Uh, so this right here, this is a, a non-one-to-one -one function. This is not one-to-one. -one. It's still a function, but it's not one-to-one -one because we have the same output twice and multiple times, actually, if you think about a lot of these horizontal lines. You can probably look through the rest of them. Hopefully you can identify which one of these next two is a one-to-one -one function, which one's not. If we think about the horizontal line test, well, we already determined vertical, they're all functions. Horizontal line test says at every single potential level on the y-axis, every single potential output, I need to have at most one intersection with my graph. Notice we can miss it and that would actually be okay. Uh, but if I think about every potential level, it's only hitting my graph once. And that's signifying that these outputs are only happening one time. They don't happen again later. There's only one input that's giving us that one output and that is mappable backwards and forwards, which is gonna lead us to inverses. This is one-to-one. -one. The next one's clearly not. If we think about some of these horizontal lines, in this case, we're intersecting this graph three times. That means that we get the same output three different times for three different inputs. Um, that is certainly okay for functions, but not okay for one-to-one -one functions. Now, we talked about the horizontal line test, right? We said, uh, if you imagine horizontal lines, if those horizontal lines hit your graph more than once, you do not have a one-to-one -one function because that would represent multiple outputs that are the same, not unique. Well, if it's called a horizontal line test, then a horizontal line can't pass the horizontal line test. We'd have no outputs until we get to right here, and we'd say, oh wait, wait, we have a whole bunch of the same output. That's what that horizontal line means, it's constant. So this right here cannot be a one-to-one -one function either. At lots of different inputs, we're getting the same output, and that would be um, a failure of a one-to-one -one function. So again, why did we learn it? We learned it because we're gonna find out in the next video that only one-to-one -one functions have inverses and every inverse comes from a one-to-one -one function. So if a function is one-to-one, -one, it has an inverse. If a function has an inverse, it's also one-to-one. -one. So we needed this to determine that functions have inverses and then we're gonna to to find them in the next video. So I hope that made sense. I know it was pretty brief, so Yay, I got a brief, I got a quick one. Uh, but hopefully you now understand when a function is one-to-one -one and when it's not. We'll talk about some algebraic um, looks of functions a little bit later. Have a good day.